Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing the Midori Fountain Pen, MD Paper Products Fountain Pen. This was uh, released, I think, in early 2021 in Japan, uh, and then slightly later, coming into March, uh, late March, was uh, introduced here in Australia and to a few other retailers. Um, this pen was provided to me for review uh, by inkedpens.com.au, uh, a really lovely retailer here in Australia, uh, supplying a really nice and unique range of products, uh, including this pen. So if you're interested in this pen, go and check it out at inkedpens.com.au. As is typical of Midori, this product came packaged in a very simple, minimalistic way. Cardboard sleeve over the plastic uh, tray that the pen comes in. Um, obviously the pen is out of this, uh, but the pen sat in there with the cap over the uh, over the cardboard sleeve there. Uh, I did an unboxing of this pen if you wanna check that out. Uh, and there's just the information that's on the back. This is the medium, uh, which says, Thickness ideal for everyday writing, such as diaries, letters, and sketching your ideas. Uh, the curved tip allows smooth writing with minimal smudging at any angle, suiting all writing styles. And what that means is, I'll just quickly show it to you on the nib now. You can see that the nib curls down there. So it like slightly leans downwards. Um, the idea being uh, that when you're writing you are sort of more direct onto the page or something i'm not exactly sure if that makes too much of a difference in terms of smudging uh, or anything like that but it uh it does mean in my opinion that actually i think it's a slightly drier writer uh, because that is not where the uh the majority of the ink flow sort of generally tends to lead so this pen has a very distinct vintage vibe to it and i think that's fairly clear to see Steel cap, like a lot of pens, like the Parker 51 or, and a range of pens like that, a simple, flexible, but sort of strong clip. Seamless sort of a step down onto the barrel of the pen, which is plastic. It says MD paper products there. And then that's just an injection molded cap, uh, body of the pen. Um, it is a snap cap and has a good snap to come off. It is very secure on there has a clear plastic feed uh, and section, uh, which if you, once again, if you watch that unboxing video, which I will link down below, uh, it's great when you pop a cartridge in there and you see it fill up uh, with ink. It's, a, it's actually a very cool sort of uh, design aspect, in my opinion, of this pen. Um, small steel nib um, and unique nib I, I found in my collection. I'd ha I couldn't find anything that exactly matched uh, this nib. Um, and then it's printed with M on the side for medium, just there. And then on the front it says MD paper. It's a fairly, fairly minimalist, fairly simple pen. Simple, you know, plastic on plastic on plastic. Little metal ring there on the end of the section, uh, just to sort of secure against for the barrel of the pen. Um, the barrel basically lines up nib with the print on the on the pen there. The grip section is textured. It is circular. It's not triangle, but it is textured on two panels on the top of the uh, on the top of the grip there. Um, the bottom of it is smooth, and those t little textured sections there that you could probably just hear there just give you a place where you are, when you hold the pen just to stop the plastic being slippery because there is a taper on that section uh, that is actually quite pronounced. It's about two millimeter taper from top to bottom, or a little bit over two millimeters. The pen is made in Slovenia, and even though Midori is a very, very proud, strong Japanese brand, I assume a lot of the design element of the pen was handled by uh, the Japanese portion of this company. As I said, it is standard international, but there is a caveat to that. Not all standard international cart uh, converters will fit this pen. Most cartridges I've looked at seem like they would um, but the issue is now I found a converter in my collection that is just one I bought on eBay five for two dollars or something a simple push-pull converter like a really unfancy converter that fit quite nicely um, because it's got a sort of a more narrow bulk around uh, the actual 
body of the uh, converter. Um, the opening or the nipple is the same as a standard international, and so any standard international cartridge fits over that, but it's whether it actually gets down in deep enough. Um, so things like the Kaveco full-size converter doesn't fit, but the Schmidt K5 does. The Kaveco push-pull doesn't even fit, uh, yet the Monteverde mini push-pull converter does fit. So you're looking for a slightly smaller converter. My suggestion, is your refill cartridges. And uh, this ink, this pen actually comes with some cartridges, which why don't we look at those now? So as I said, I have a converter in there. I had a particular ink I was dying to get into this pen. Um, I didn't finish the second, I've had one black cartridge through it from that, which is the one I put in at the start and I wrote that out. Then I put in a blue black cartridge um, from the second packet and I did not uh, use that completely. So I put a brass stopper in that um, to because I think it's actually, I don't like to waste ink, but what I would do is uh, these come in a pack of six and they're not the cheapest cartridges around, um, but the ink is nice and they are once again from a, a company that is quite sort of exclusive, but, uh, but I would suggest refilling cartridges, just using an ink syringe, uh, you know, to sort of put in whatever ink you like. This will hold more than most of the converters I've found that fit this pen. It will fit the length of a full-size converter or a long cartridge, but it doesn't fit at the top for all of them. So these two uh, inks here, I've actually done a little page where I've, I've written with both of them. This is Clairefontaine paper, both of them when they were in the pen. Um, and did a little water resistance test. So the black, uh, I think is a nice black ink that leans slightly on the purple gray side. And the cartridge is standard international. You can see the water resistance, a lot of it goes. It just really is not a particularly water resistant ink. But you can see there the black is quite solid, but the shading does lean a nice interesting uh, purple gray. As for the blue black, this is for me, this is just a little bit too light for a blue-black, but it is quite a pleasant ink. Not super saturated, lots of grey. Once again, standard international. And some water resistance. So these were both done, both these writing samples, with the Midori pen, which is not the wettest pen, as you'll see in the writing sample. Um, but it lays down enough ink to certainly get a sense of the colour, but you can see a little bit of water resistance there, but you see that on the swab greys, you know, and uh, light blues coming through sort of the blue-black there. Now back to the pen itself. Firstly, price $65.95 Australian, which I will talk about later. But that is the price from inkpens.com.au. Okay, let's do a couple of comparisons, size comparisons. So first I'm going to pull up is a Lamy Safari. And the second pen I'm going to pull up is the Parker Jotter, another steel capped pen. So you can see it's on the smaller side. It's in comparison to the Jotter, it's got a bit of width to it, but it doesn't have the length of the Lamy Safari. Uncapped, you see it still sits close to the Jotter in terms of length, but once again, that width is good, shorter than the Safari. The interesting thing is when you post this pen, you can see when you post it, it starts to edge out the jotter. Uh, it does have a relatively long cap. It does post quite deeply, uh, but it is much shorter than the Lamy Safari. I actually find the way this pen posts to be really comfortable. It's It posts quite, as I said, quite deep. And uh, it puts the weight of the pen very much into your hand. Um, it doesn't, if it sat further back, the weight of this cap being mostly metal would actually probably back weight the pen. Where it sits, I actually find it to be quite comfortable. The specs of this pen are capped, it's 133 millimeters. So as you said, as you can see, slightly shorter than things like the Lamy Safari. Uncapped, it's 123, which is an okay length for writing, but I think perhaps ever so slightly for fountain pens on the shorter side. And then posted, it's 145, which for me is a great length, and it feels really good when it is posted. Um, the weight of the pen is about 15 grams, seven is in the body, and eight is in the cap. So the cap actually weighs more. So posting that deep and putting the weight there on the webbing of the hand, doesn't affect the balance when you do that. As I said, the section uh, has a good taper on it from about 10 millimeters to between seven and eight at the narrowest point. As I said, 
I was particularly keen to get a particular ink in this pen. Uh, I used the black cartridge through, found that very pleasant, easy everyday writer. The blue black I used, what? about half i suppose of the cartridge um it was just, for me that was just a little bit too light i just don't want to waste it so i've, I've capped it there with a the brass stopper um and when i put my little converter in here the ink i had to put in this was Dymine syrah i just think it looks very very cool looking through the feed and seeing that red and i actually think the red matches this cream and the cream i find nice like obviously midori have a sort of a color palette of this sort of cream and white that they quite enjoy this is just this just being a midori notebook um and using that color as the barrel of the pen gives it a nice interesting vintage sort of feel um, but also it looks nice with a contrasting color like the diamond syrah there so let's do a writing sample now i'll put md because it's md paper products Steel medium nib, and the ink, as I said, is Diamine Zyra. Okay. It's consistent, it's not the wettest pen, but you can see it's certainly not a dry pen. Um, it's not scratchy. Like the camera will probably be picking up more of this than actually the feedback actually than there is. It's got a bit of feedback. Um, I think that angle of the nib creates feedback. And if you draw the pen across the page, like a, as if a right-hander would, you know, the reverse of what a right-hander would be doing, it's certainly smoother. Um, but I think there is certainly like a little bit more feedback on this nib uh, than what some people might be used to um, if they're coming from like Lamy or something like that. I should do some quick writing. Wow, that is terrible, terrible writing. It's more scribble, but as you can see, like no hard starts, it keeps going. It's, the flow is consistent, the flow is good. Reverse writing is not too bad, but it will dry out. Uh, and it is a hard nib, you're not gonna get any flex out of this whatsoever. So let's talk pros and cons now for the, uh, the Midori fountain pen. Couple of cons I have. Um, it snaps and secures very, very well, but it's very easy to sort of not line it. It's not going to do it right now, of course, because I'm, you know, but like lining it up, sometimes it just feels like it doesn't quite want to get onto the snap. So it's got an odd feeling to it. A couple of other issues that have been brought up with, you know, in terms of after my unboxing video that uh, people generally, not me necessarily, people generally aren't a big fan of is the branding on the pen there, MD Paper Products. But I kind of think you have to have branding on a pen you don't have to, but every pen does have branding. Once again, Lamy has Lamy written there. Kaveco has Kaveco Sport printed on the side there. This is branding the pen. MD Paper Products is the company. It's branding. Like, it's their pen. They're going to brand it. Is it the most attractive branding? No. But I understand why it is there. The next issue uh, I want to discuss in term that is a concern for me is the fact that this pen doesn't come with a converter. At this price point, at $65 Australian, I think it should come with a converter. That's just my opinion. Um, and while we're at price point, I think this is at the absolute top of its price point. I think it's a good pen and you'll hear some good pros for it in a little bit. But I think that it is at the high, the highest point of, of its price point. Now for the good. I really like the look of the pen. I actually think it's got a very cool vintage look. That sort of cream colored plastic, I really enjoy that off-white is nice. It's nice not to be another black or burgundy or blue. That off-white I think is nice and unique. Um, the steel cap with a good clip on it, I'm quite happy with. 
Um, I think it has a solid medium nib. Like, it's consistent. It writes well. It's smooth. It's... As I said, it's reliable, it's consistent, there's no hard starts. The feed and everything works very nicely. Um, it is on the finer side of medium, uh, but it is Japanese. So that is what, well, Japanese brand made in Slovenia. But that's, so that's to be expected. It has um, a good, reliable flow. Not super wet, but that also makes it good for sort of EDC use. If you're carrying this with a notebook or a journal or something along those lines, um, I think it would be really great because... It would write on different kinds of paper quite well. Everything from the Clairefontaine, which I've used to, and I couldn't do a review of this pen without doing this, Midori paper. Just for the sake of the exercise, we have the Midori fountain pen. Medium on Midori. This is just the standard paper which is toothy and ink resistant and lovely. It actually feels very nice on this paper. Um, I do enjoy the Midori paper and the feel of it um, using a pen like this. That tooth is and feedback is very pleasant uh, and has a really lovely, almost pencil-like sensation. So Midori paper, Clairefontaine paper, even lower end paper, because it's not a super wet pen, you're gonna be okay. In the last uh, thing to say about, uh, I should well, I should also say the ink in these is solid and it looks nice and they've got a good, you know, uh, couple of stock standard colours, so that's great. Come in a pack of six, which is handy, can be refilled using other ink, of course. Um, while there are some availability issues with this pen at the moment because it's international release is kind of slow rolling out, um, but I think this is a reliable pen. It may not be um, everyone's favourite uh, at, at this price point, uh, but I think it does its job, it's reliable, it wrote straight out of the box, it was, that's all you can really ask of a pen, and I think it does a pretty decent job. And also, coming from Midori, a brand I really enjoy, like their paper products are beautiful, and they're simple, and they're minimalist, and in a way they've done a similar thing with this pen, uh, which I think is actually quite nice. So thank you for watching uh, this video review of the Midori fountain pen. Hope you found it interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.